Can we just exalt his name? Please, before you sit down, just give him a wave offering this evening. Give him praise with a wave offering. Just say, Lord, I know I'm here. Thank you for making me to be here. I know you are here and I'm waving to you because you are my father, you are my friend, faithful as ever, wonderful as ever. Let's give him a wave offering. Let's thank him. Let's bless him. Let's say thank you because he's our God. Thank him because he's set to do new things with us. The God of new beginnings every day, every time. We worship. We honor and adore. Thanks, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshiped. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Let's have our seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, choir. God increase you on every side in Jesus' name. Ah, it's wonderful to be in Heritage of God Church again for this year's um, convention. Last year, I sat there and I was surmising in myself. I said, yeah, for 25 years, we've been running this convention together. And then I told myself, I want to have a break now. I will say heritage. Then our national leader turned to me there. He didn't know what I was thinking. Can we clap for our prof in the house? He said, Pastor Tuji, now your friend is being made the resident pastor now. Will you abandon him? Ha! And he didn't know what I was thinking in my mind. I'm serious. Because your convention is always close to ours. Just three weeks interval. And I was still telling him where we were. Yes, this time yesterday. You know? The moment he said that, I said, see me. Oh. Me that said, I want to wave to heritage. After 25 years, see him. Telling me, will I abandon my friend? And do you know God doesn't abandon his people? He doesn't abandon his people. So we appreciate him for bringing us again to this year's convention. And when I heard about the theme, I knew God is said to do some great things. Because our God, Perusian scripture, is the God of increase. So when I was told I'm the one to give the opening charge, it just reminded me of a scripture. Please, can we together open to the book of Exodus chapter 1? Exodus chapter 1. Because many times we expect God to speak the one that is in season. No. Most times God speaks the one that is against the season. So that you can know him as God. And there is a reason why. In Exodus chapter 1, the Bible began to tell us from verse 1 to 7 about the Israelites that came to Egypt. And all of them were 17 in number when they came. Exodus chapter 1. And the time came that the Bible said in verse 6, And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation you would think that the end of that generation would mean the end of Israel in Egypt. No. Can we read verse 7 together, everybody? Exodus chapter 1, verse number 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and worked exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Why can't the end of Joseph, Jacob, their fathers that brought them to land. Why can't their end be the end of Israel? Because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the God of increase. So God is talking to us about increase in this convention because that is who he is. Even when he said he was going to punish the Israelites that they were going to go into a land of captivity, he still told them, in that same land, I will increase you. 
Sir, how can a people be under punishment and God is saying, I will increase you? He's the God of increase. The Bible said they are, and they increased abundantly. I don't know your level of increase, but me, I want to move to a new level of increase. Do you know part of the reason why? There are many reasons. But let me be, let me be frank with you. When I remain at the level I remain, I am now, I won't be able to fulfill purpose and destiny to the fullest. If you remain at your level, no matter your increase, you won't fulfill divine purpose and, and plans. So it, it won't pay God. God knows it won't pay him. That those people died does not mean they won't increase. They died. They left. But the Bible said, they, when they, those people were even alive, the Bible never qualified their increase. But after their death, the Bible said, in what way did they increase? Abundantly. Please, whatever, however God is talking to us about this convention, is to drive us into faith to believe in divine increase. And let's see again what happened. Because many of us, when God is talking about this, and we look at the economy, the economy is not only in Nigeria. You look at the political setup, the social setup. No, we're not supposed to. Something surprised me during the lockdown of coronavirus 2020 to 2021. Sir, ma, all of us will know that. The, rich, the richest in the world became richer. Yes or no? Even inside coronavirus, the rich, the rich became richer. How come? Now, let's read verse 8 downwards a bit. I will read from here. Exodus chapter 1. Now, there arose, arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph, though he was a liar, because everything Joseph did was there. He decided not to know Joseph, because he had another agenda. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Do you understand? They are not knowing Joseph there now. Uh -huh. You will know the reason why they didn't know Joseph. How will he know the people of, of, of Israel no, and not know Joseph? How come? It doesn't, it's not possible. But because he had an ulterior motive, like the enemy has ulterior motives in this season against God's people, God's plan and God's purpose. What did he do? He said, come. Let us just white lay with them. Because their increase began to terrorize their landlords. Your increase will terrorize everybody you meet on the earth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, come, let us deal wisely with them. Lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they have fallen out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and so get them up out of the land. What did they do? Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But look at verse 12. I want you to underline this place in your scriptures, in your Bible. What did the Bible say? Can we read it together? But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. The worse the situation becomes in the world, the more we are going to increase. The more we are going to multiply. The more we are going to grow. Hallelujah, people of God. So please let us understand. Ours is not the first time. And ours will not be the last time. That everywhere will be hard. Things will be difficult. It doesn't hold God back. The Bible said, the more they afflicted them, the more they oppressed them, the more they multiplied and grew. Why? Because inside the midst of these people, there is a God of who? God of increase. It's there. And that same God is our God. And even coming under the covenant of Christ makes it permanently sure. Because he said in Zechariah, he said, by the blood of your covenant, I'm going to send your prisoners out of the pit where in there is what? No water. He said, oh, ye prisoners of hope, look to the stronghold. As we come to this convention, please let us look up to the stronghold. We are not hopeless prisoners. We are not even prisoners anymore. We are not prisoners to the economy of this nation. We are not prisoners to the political setup of this nation. We are not prisoners to the social setup of, of this nation. We are the delivered. We are the set free of the Lord Jesus. We are the born free of the kingdom of God. The Bible says, we are, wherever we have the Holy Spirit, that is what? That is liberty. We have the Holy Ghost in his house, and there is liberty. So we are children of liberty. 
we are not prisoners of, we are not prisoners, we have been delivered out of that pit wherein there is no water. So whatever we need to, in, to increase, that is what we need to open up to. Whatever God is telling us about increase, that's what we need to respond to, both as a church and as families and as individuals. Let me close my welcome to you with this short personal encounter with God. Shortly after petrol increased, we had a vehicle that is a VC small Mazda, tri Mazda tribute. That's my wife's vehicle because she too goes to the village, so that's the one she drives. I began to, it had a little fault. I began to repair so as to help us mitigate the effects of fuel increase. I went it fuel was 500 now. But till today, God made sure, or maybe the devil, I don't know which one, but I think it's God. God made sure that vehicle didn't work. It was our V8 vehicles. We have two of them that was working. And you know, the fuel we are going to put, that tribute will take 60 liters of fuel maximum. But for our Range Rover, for our Amanda, we take to the village. The Range Rover is 120 liters. The Amanda is 130 liters. And as we are going to round up the year, the Lord showed me a vision again. I saw that at the same time, God gave us another V8. I saw it. I said, God, fuel is now 670 naira. You are showing me that you are giving us V8 and V6 together around the same time. But sir, my focus was not on the vehicles. I told my people, I said, God wants to increase our assignment. We already have two V8s. Why the third one? Why another big vehicle, V6? I saw it was big, a big boss. I said, ha, ah, in this season. So my focus shifted from the vehicles. It shifted to the assignment. If we remain at our level, we won't be able to fulfill destiny. Don't forget I said it. And in the first four months of this year, God gave us both the V8 and the V6. A bigger bus and another land, Toyota Land Cruiser. We were here last month. Me and my team, just to lift up this is our convention, myself and eight of them were here for about an hour and a half. Pastor Kennedy was here, his wife was here. We were here together to pray with her and then we, we, we vamoosed again. That trip, we had, we had wanted to make some trees before. But the moment that Toyota Land Cruiser came, we were able to do more. There were places, the, the, I mean, the vehicles, some of the vehicles we were using for our mission work had been breaking down. There was one of them, the day we went to the village, it packed up in the village, that's my old red jeep, very faithful. The other green one, it's leaking, the roof was leaking. There was a day, I took those two jeeps to the village this year for a village trek. We trekked for 27 kilometers, praying as we are going, and we are distributing tracts. We call it prayer trek. By the time we are leaving the last village, one of our jeeps got spoiled. I used that our green jeep to ferry 16 people out of, the, out of the bush in the night. There was no other way for me. And as we are going, rain was falling. The, I mean, the sign windows, windows were not winding up. But in the midst of that, God sent us a V8 again, and he sent us a bus. Why? He wanted our assignment to what? To increase. If you are not increasing, you won't pay God. If you are not increasing, your assignment on that will not be finished. You must increase so that you can finish your assignment. So the increase is not, let me tell you, the increase is not even about you. It's about God's kingdom. It's about God's assignment. Finally, it's about your reward in heaven. Because the, small, the smaller you are, the smaller the work you will do. But the more increased you are, you increase you are, the more the work you are going to do. And then when the earth is over, the more your reward in heaven. Can you bow down your heads this evening and talk to God? I want to increase. And I want to increase on every side. I want to enlarge. I want to grow. I want to multiply on every side. Help me to increase. Help me to multiply. As I begin to bring the choir on here tonight, can the choir begin to come as they pray to that God, I want to increase. I want to multiply. Nothing will hinder me. Those people were oppressed, yet they were increasing. Those people were afflicted, yet they were increasing. No affliction, economic affliction will not reduce my increase. Economic oppression will not reduce my increase. Political oppression will not. Social oppression will not. My current situation will not reduce my increase. You will increase me on every side. Maritally, you will increase me. 
Financially, you increase me. Emotionally, you increase me. You increase my power of prayer. You increase me in faith. You increase me in obedience. You increase me in your anointings upon my life. You will increase my understanding. You will increase my knowledge. Because I must increase abundantly. The Bible said, those guys increased, ab I must increase abundantly. It doesn't matter the king that says I will not increase. It doesn't matter. Because the Bible said, the more they oppress them, the more they afflict them, the more they grew. And the more they multiply. The more they grew, the more they multiply. Because those are great indices of increase. That will be our portion. That will be our experience. Lord, bring everyone here into a new realm of revelation of your increase. That our increase does not depend on what happens in the world. It depends on the contract between us and you. Show us in what areas you want us to increase. Show us in what areas you want us to enlarge. Father, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people said, Amen. Thank you.